Welcome to day three of the world famous mining show. I'm Peter Clausey, here with Investor Intel. We've been doing a lot of interviews this week, but today we have a very special guest, Randy Hoback, Federal Member of Parliament for Fort Albert. Good to see you again, Peter. Always nice to see you. Yeah, Fort nice. Albert is in uh, Saskatchewan. Actually, Prince Albert in Saskatchewan. Why do I always call it Fort Albert? I, I always get it wrong. You need to come to PA and we'll get it right. And then so, you'll see the sign and you'll see Deaton Baker's house and you'll okay. be happy. Saskatchewan was just ranked in the top 10 mining jurisdictions globally. And not just t top 10, top three. three. Yes, actually number one in Canada and top three in the world. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Why is Saskatchewan ranked so high amongst mining jurisdictions? You know, I think, uh, I think what's happening is, is mining companies are recognizing that if they actually do a project in Saskatchewan, they can go through the entire process and actually get to the point of building a mine. So, there, yeah, there's regulatory, regulatory things that they have to do. There's environment, duty to consult, all that. But you look at Saskatchewan, they've seen companies like BHP Billiton just do the Janssen project. You see all the Paula Potash mines, right. you see the uranium mines, and uh, you see that here's an example where they've actually explored, done the work, and now they've got actually physically running mines. Creating jobs, adding to the exactly provincial right. economy. And then you also got in the northern part, the First Nations are very uh, excited about the mining sector. They don't view right. it as a negative thing, they view it as a positive thing, and they participate and are actively participating in the mining sector in northern Saskatchewan. So when you think mining in Saskatchewan, the first two properties that come to mind are uranium and potash. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of both of them. Scar yes. Lake, the Athabasca Basin. But Saskatchewan has more than just uh, uranium and, and potash. In fact, if you look at the show here at PDAC, you're starting to see more companies doing different things in Saskatchewan. For example, on the eastern side of the province, you're seeing cobalt, nickel. Um, Cobal seeing, cobalt in Saskatchewan? Yes, you bet. Okay. Uh, on the eastern side, and actually some guys in the Athabasca Basin are saying, we've spent all this time looking for uranium that we haven't looked at other types of minerals that could be there. Right. I understand in the boulder field, you've, you're finding vanadium and cobalt with the uranium. Yes. So. You, you start looking at, you know, those are things back in the 60s and 70s nobody was looking at. And now people are starting to shake off those maps and come back and say, hey, there's also this here, there's that here. Right. And they're also starting to realize that uh, when they were doing the original exploration, they didn't, they didn't really do that thorough outside of uranium. They just looked at uranium and just stopped at uranium. So, right. And the uranium was so rich that, okay, that's great, we're done. But I think they're finding there's all sorts of other opportunities in northern Saskatchewan. And, and as a federal member of parliament, you have access to the federal government, a lot of what the mining we do is provincially oriented. That's right. And we deal with the provincial land office and uh, local offices. But this week, the, the federal government made a large announcement about creating a new mining awareness program across Canada. Yep. Uh, CMPP, I think it's yes. called. And, you know, it's great because we need to have a vision for the entire country and we have to stand up in the world and be proud of our mining sector. You know, I find it really interesting. You come to this show and you see all these countries here wanting Canadian mining technology to take back to their country. Right. Yet that same technology goes through so many hurdles and so many uh, barriers to be used here in Canada. It just drives me crazy. So it's nice to see this being created, but it also has to go hand in hand with other areas to be uh, streamlined in such a way that we can actually see things happen. You know, Frank right. McKenna said it best right now. It's seems like it's difficult to sell Canada to the world because you can't get big projects done. Well, I think this is the first step to getting back to that point where we can actually do big projects and do great things here in Canada. Great. And we do thank the federal government for the flow-through program. Yes. I, you know, I give the Liberal government credit, five years, bankability. You know, conservative, I wish we would have done it ourselves. I, <laughs> I hate to bite my lip on that one, but that was something that was done right. But now they have to follow through in other areas to make sure that it actually has the effectiveness. It's no good giving flow-through shares if you can't develop the resource. Right. So they've got to make sure we can still develop the resources. Um, so up in northern Saskatchewan, we have seen uranium, cobalt, and vanadium is a hot metal right now. As goes China, so goes vanadium. Fit what, 99% of the world's consumption of vanadium goes into steel. China makes 50% of the world's steel. Yep. Does Canada have any plans to help enhance our advanced uh, steel technologies? better science to help us develop these other metals into the steel. You know, I, I'm not physically aware of anything at this point. It doesn't mean there isn't. It's just, again, there's so many opportunities in Saskatchewan to be aware of all those opportunities in the different niche markets that they may go into. Right. It, it, you just can't know it all. But, uh, you know, the nice thing about it, if you come into Saskatchewan, you go into Regina and talk to the, uh, the mineral resource people there, if you say, I want to look at something particular, they've got enough experience to say, you know what, maybe this is a good place for you to kind of search around and start snooping around in this area, you might find something. So uh, again, you've got a full province that's backing the mining sector, which is good to see. 
So good infrastructure, good mining education. Is there a school of mines in Saskatchewan? Well, University of Saskatchewan, University of Regina, depending on what you're doing. University of Regina tends to be more oil than gas. Right. University of Saskatchewan's more engineering in the mining sector, so you've got potash. You've got the companies like Hatch and groups like that with big offices in Saskatchewan because of, again, potash. It's such a big, uh, we're such a global leader in potash around the world. Right. So we've got that infrastructure already in place. And in your writing, there's a pr large producing mine, isn't there? Well, it's not producing yet. Uh, Star Diamond Project is, uh, is a project that's been ongoing for about 10, 15 years. Uh, now Rio Tinto's come in with some very specialized machinery to go into the Kimberlite and do some appropriate sampling to uh, hopefully lead to a developed mine. And, it, and it, here's a classic example of Saskatchewan in my writing. We're excited to see them there. We're excited to have them actually uh, extracting the resources, and we're excited because we can see the benefits to everybody, the First Nations, right. the cities of Prince Albert, you know, Malfort, Nippon. So everybody, in fact, they did some town hall meetings this last month, two, 300 people there, not one protester. They're all there excited, just you know, really? more or less, how do we get you going, what do we need, what can we, how can we help you? Well, you and I were talking before this with Stephen Wallace from Searchlight, and they have properties in North Saskatchewan. Yeah. And he's really excited about being there. Yeah, I was actually talking to Stephen. And what's interesting, he's taking advantage of a, um, it's an exploration, um, not a tax credit, exploration um, a program that they have in his region where he's exploring. Right. So I think it pays for about $50,000 worth of drilling. Well, not a lot of money, but it's a strong symbol to those people that were there to support them and to back them. And it's actually, I think it's a good move from the province because there's an area that we know there's lots of resources, there's high unemployment, there's actually infrastructure getting in there, so why wouldn't we explore that area and extract what we can to the most potential? You must be very proud of the global rankings. Saskatchewan, yeah. number third best jurisdiction in the world for mining. Well, we're going to aim for number one. That's who we are in Saskatchewan. But, you know, we encourage people to come out and visit us and talk to us. Uh, we have so much to offer. Uh, so that's, you know, that's my goal here today is, is to just remind people Saskatchewan's there and it is an amazing province to live in. It's an amazing province to do business in. Thank you for your time, Mr. Hoback. It's always good to see you. Thank you, Peter. Take care.